Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about PicoTrade. As of the recording of this video, uh, Tolarium Academy has not come up with his video, uh, so I'm sure that he will um, have an interesting perspective about PicoTrade, and he do definitely does some of the best reviews, if not the best reviews, of products, magic products on YouTube, so I can't wait to see what uh, he has to say. So I, I did want to make this video before, so it was just from my perspective and was not really influenced. So as of this moment, Rogue Deck Builder has spoken out against Pika. The Mana Source has um, disconnected from Pika, which is a that's a that's a big one because he um, previously was promoting Pika quite a bit, and to make that decision, I know was very difficult. It's a difficult decision to make because that is one of your core sponsors, and to disconnect um, in that way is very um, telling as to where Pukra is today. Now you might say, okay, the UI issue, this issue, that issue, um, I'm just going to talk about Pico points and their willingness to give them out to everybody. So it is not a mystery if you are a content creator, if you uh, create articles, um, they will pay you in Pico points. If you're an admin, uh, they will pay you in Pico points. And you really have to think about the model. The model is on the top, you have a CEO, COO, and they need to pay themselves. They're not doing this because they want to do it for free, right? There's a cost and this isn't normal. Like all the things I'm gonna say is reasonable and then I'll get to why some of it is over the top. So if you're the CEO of Puka Trade, you have to pay yourself. What can you pay yourself with? Now you can sell Pico points, which is similar to you know giving yourself Pico points. Yourself. It's the same scenario. You can sell Pico points, a hundred uh, points for a dollar, and then every dollar someone pays, or every membership, every gold, every silver, um, you can pocket that. And that makes sense. That's what a lot of companies do. That's not something that we should criticize them for. That's a business model. Now. Giving Pico points to content creators, that is a little sketchy, uh, mainly because you're, by definition, content creators are promoting the product, getting their subscribers and followers to go on Pico, so then they can get paid in Pico points as, through a reference, a referral code, or um, even just being paid a sizable amount to begin with. Now. All this is, should be fine. All this should be okay. The, you know, people being paid in this form of currency, it's absolutely fine in my opinion. The one thing that I found very, I was taken aback by was when two people have an argument uh, about did a trade happen? And I come from Magic Online Trading League, which has since you know deteriorated into oblivion. But that used to be the number one trading platform online. And I used to trade a lot. So when someone send, send, says that they sent a package and they didn't, there's consequences to that. There's severe consequences, meaning they get pretty much doxxed, if you will, and then no one trades with them. Their email, their address, um, the police might even get called in if the amount was a, a, a ton. So at the end of the day, there was severe consequences if you didn't send a package. In Puka, if you don't send a package, there's a disagreement, you get the admin involved. A lot of times, the admin will give both parties points because it's just to resolve it, just to take it off their plate. And that's a reasonable resolution is, hey, I don't know who did what, but hey, this, here you go. Um, that's problem number one I have with it because there should be consequences, severe consequences for for doing that, for ascending. And you see that on the Pika Reddit, um, subreddit all the time is, you know, what happens in those cases. And the second point issue I have is when they give points for people who upvote um, favorable comments. I get it, you know, giving points to sponsors, giving, I mean, that's it's not ideal in my opinion, but I get that part. But giving points for people to say good stuff about you in formats where obviously when they say good stuff, it doesn't say, oh, and I was paid points by Puka. Like if you were to make a sponsored video, you just say I'm sponsored by Puka points. Like that's who sponsored me. They paid me in some form of currency and that would be okay because then the reader would be like, oh, well, okay. And 
the terms of the Reddit, they used to pay, and they still probably do, they pay people to say good stuff about them. But when people are saying good stuff about them, they don't have a disclaimer. There's no disclaimer. And that feels very shady to me. So that part I don't like as much as um, I don't understand why it's even necessary to do it. And then lastly, um, but most importantly, it's the system is built upon, you know, people trading cards. And you always hear like the one defensive picker that has stood the test of time, I never understood it, was, well, I traded 100 bulk cards for a force of will. I traded 100 bulk cards for a waistline. They couldn't be that bulk. And it couldn't be everyone is trading up because that makes no sense. There has to be people trading down. And if you're smart enough and you're wise enough to use the internet, to get a card, I mean, you're online, you can check prices, you can check, you know, availability of the card on TCG Player or Star City Games. That concept of people just getting all these valuable cards by trading bulk, not everyone can do it, right? And I would say the majority of players are disinclined to do it. Maybe you have some casual players um, who would, you know, trade it for a whale way, but for the most, most of it was, um, it couldn't be. And I feel like Puka promoted that image. They definitely did because they said big card traded of the week or big card traded of the day. They used to do, do that all the time. They promoted this image of that you could trade 100 bulk cards for a Force of Will when that is the minority. That's a minority of people. That's the loudest people saying that. And maybe they did and they loved it, but that was in the beginning. Now it's a little different. Plus the fact is not everyone can do it for every one who has traded a hundred bulk for a force of will, there's gotta be multiple people trading, trading, you know, there's gotta be at least that one person trading that force of will for multiple bulk if it cancels out. And yeah, and that's pretty much my opinion of Pika Trade is love the idea, love the concept, but theoretically and the way that they handle the situation, the way that they're always mad that they're subreddit, they're always so um, angry. They always seem so angry when they respond. And so, uh, you know, the, that's their community, right? That's who is uh, paying for their membership and stuff. And they always seem very disrespectful. Uh, and the only people they respect is the, the people that they hired to sponsor and the people that, you know, they, the admins. And it's a whole system where from the top down, you have a business model, which makes a lot of sense, but the execution of the business model and the way that it's perceived from, from a PR perspective of, you know, giving people points for upvoting uh, comments, but no, having no disclaimer as they were given points. The only reason that it ever comes out is, you know, people screenshot it and put it on Reddit. I'm a little concerned about their business practice and Pukra is right now, like after the mana source dropped it, it's gotta be, right now the mana source has dropped it, Tolarian hasn't spoken about it. It's gotta be a, something where it's going down. This is exactly the trajectory as the ma magic monthly, monthly magic box, because when no one's watching and no one cares, it continued and continued and still $10,000. I mean, I have a separate video with the evidence, $10,000 from magic players and you know pico trade we'll see what happens but you know the ship is going down <laughs> hi guys